Hello, welcome back to the ministry. And the Lord showed me, he's had me do this show before, um, organized crime. Um, God showed me in chess the other day, we are in the midst of moving across the board. And in that movement, we must be strategic. Organized crime is nine times out of 10, there is an organized crime syndicate and you have the cops that have to go in and bust these things up, okay? So they will send in covert agents or cops that will make their way in to get the information to take down the kingpins, the bosses, all these kinds of things, whoever it is that organize this crime okay so the Lord showed me that you have to play the board of chess and one of the positions that you play on chess is exchanging or trading pieces. As a police officer, when they go undercover, they are trading their real identity for the identity of the person that is the alias they pretend to be in order to infiltrate the enemies boundary okay so with that being said God will position you by using a assumed lesser piece God has you right now in a season where you're in isolation to everybody around you you look like everything is so much Everything's falling apart in your life. Your life don't look like nothing is happening. It just looks horrible. The enemy will look upon your circumstance, laugh at you, mock you, and say, ha ha, ain't nothing going to come good out of that. Remember Jesus? Nothing good comes out of, I believe it was Bethlehem. Nothing good comes out of that. But God had you covertly placed there to look like a, on so that the enemy would try to snatch you attack you so on for his glory he's allowed those attacks to come in so that he could use that against your enemies what am i saying in the plays of chess you can actually take a lesser piece like a pawn and Take out a higher piece of your enemies. God will have you look like the weakling. In the show Buffy, I always watch, there are two friends that she has. And her two friends always look like, oh, these are the two human friends of hers. If we ever need to cause any tr trouble, let me grab one of them. Let me grab her watcher. Let me grab her best friend, the guy friend. Let me grab her best girlfriend. Let me grab them because as soon as these people that are the weaker people in her unit come together or pull them out, that's going to take her mind off of this. But you know something I noticed? All of them know how to fight. Even with her mother, <laughs> who knew nothing about fighting, was confronted with a situation after having known her. What she did, her mother ended up face to face with a situation where she was um, confronted with um, somebody operating in a demonic format and her mama went ham on that person. Well, it wasn't a person, it was a demon, but she got that thing down and started beating on it. It's, one of those, it's like, I guess you get it from your mama then. Cause her mama was whooping that demons behind. And in another episode, it show her mama used to be kind of like on the wild child side. So she probably could have handled herself. 
all right. Not in nothing major, but she can handle herself. And um, for you, people see the people that are associated around you, your teammates, your members, the people that are that they are um, casualties. There was a movie years ago that came out um, where it was a misfit team of players and they all look like, oh, we gonna run y'all over because they look like a team of misfits. But going back to the word, what did God do with Gideon and his army? God took them all the way down to 300 people out of 10 or 20,000 men. He took them down to 300 because they looked what? Inconspicuous. Like, oh, the enemy is certain he's going to take them out. For you, you and the team that you have around you or that God's going to give you, they going to look like they ain't going to be no threat or no help to you. But the enemy is going to see them and think that he can capture these people. He can take these people out. In the organized crime TV show, what happens is they sometimes will do trades where the enemy or the crime boss will be like, oh, I'll trade you that guy for your guy because they want the guy that is the person that's going to go in undercover. I used to always wonder, Lord, why is it every time I'm playing chess, I always use a, um, I always let my bigger pieces or my weaker pieces get taken or, or whichever piece, uh, I let my ally pieces get taken. I was allowing the pawns and everybody was getting taken around me because I wanted to end up in a situation where um, I got across the board. But the Lord showed me finally this morning, you are, have been allowing your pieces to get taken because just like in this TV show, Organized Crime, you knew by allowing the people that are your closest assets to go in as decoys. They went in as, oh, it looks like you're going to be inconspicuous. Isn't that always what they do when they send somebody into these in these programs? They send somebody that looks like they're not going to be a problem. They send somebody that looks like, oh, she's just a regular female, but this is the one that can kick all of their behinds. Oh, she looks like she ain't no big deal. And that's the computer whiz that can actually take all your information from you. Oh, he looks like he's no big deal. He he can, if second somebody hit him, he gonna get knocked out. But that's the person that strategically knows when to beat you up. And he's observant enough that he knows that if he hits you in the right place, he'll take you out. So the misfits actually had become aware. I remember one time in one of the episodes of Buffy, the person, the person started beating up on um, one of her friends, started beating up on the enemy. He was like, that was for every time I got beat up in, in uh, as a child by my bullies. God will allow you to have them take the pieces that look like a lesser piece. The enemy gets cocky thinking, oh, that's a lesser piece. That person isn't worth nothing. That person. But that's the person that's going to go in and strategically take something away from the enemy. God has been having me have dreams lately that um, I've been taking things away from the enemy. In them going in, they actually are creating a temporary pull down. They are pulling down to raise up. Uh, the Lord showed me a scripture. I cannot talk about the name of it where the grouping, and I mentioned this in the previous video, the grouping of people moved in uh, and took all of their valuable people. 
This happened in David once, but it, this isn't the one I'm talking about. It was another one, I believe. He took all of their army. I mean, it was David. But it took their army people and were, had captured them. But at the sound of um, a signal from the person that was in charge, all of the troops turned on their captors and thereby took, started taking them out. But because the enemy thought that because they had captured them, they were going to take them out, they were then able to take their enemy out. Lord showed me a vision one night. I was laying in bed and I was thinking about uh, something Marcus Rogers had said. And some, I, I, sometimes he seems like overly talkative in the element of he's very loud about some things. And the Lord showed me that sometimes the Lord will take a missionary and make them a distraction. He will take somebody that looks like they're getting all of the attention, but that person was literally sent in. And I'm reminded of an episode of my show when uh, they needed to do a distraction, and her and the characters, the 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 character's father figure stepped up in front of the cop and started waving his hands and started acting like a fool to get loud and boisterous to the cop to create a diversion so that the actual person could get away. For you, the distraction was them being captured, but the capture was actually a planned scenario that was to get them not only to infiltrate, but to take out from the inside, okay? And God showed me in a couple of dreams an ushering in to a, a smooth sweep into a hallway, corridor, scenario, situation. And when the enemy comes to look, you are in a position that they can't see you. It was a couple in it, locked in an embrace. And because they had changed clothes and changed hair, what have you, their external appearance looked like one thing and the enemy wasn't looking for that. Your enemies are going to be tripped up in this season because God's going to create a scenario that creates a illusion that you're not there or don't have the strength to take them out. But you're going to infiltrate to take something from them, whether it's financial, the great wealth transfer, um, where the wealth of the wicked is given to the just, and you're going to go in and you're going to take it. Which brings me back to the title of the Yanni Nev's work called Take It Back It's Yours. You're going to go into the land and take it back. I'm hearing the song that my bishop sang at his church. I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me. That's what God's positioning you as. Money, gems, information. Remember in the previous word I talked about um, the... Uh, it was... Uh, information that was in the safe and he had to unlock the tumbler in order to get the information out of the safe um, so going back to get things that are of high value but you had to infiltrate first you had to use your weak what was assumed to be a weak player to be traded in for the strong one and you actually end up capturing their people while at the same time, yours are getting used to infiltrate and take out. 
God is using you to strategically take out your enemies, capture them, hold them. That's what organized crime is. They will go in, catch the person, take them out. And it would be as a form of a capture and then use the information that they had either to create a plea for them. If they double cross, then they lose the deal or if they send them, they will send them back in in order to be a ally. Remember how I showed you that sometimes the, the, the law will uh, use the very same thing to hurt you to be your cure. In the previous episode of Quantum Leap, I was talking about where the guy had to actually work with his very same enemy that was trying to kill him. God will have you go in and as he's taking these people out he will capture just like on the chessboard you'll capture the stronger player pieces and then as in the organized crime they would interview create deals and then send those pieces back in it's like oh I'm sending you back because they didn't know their, their their enemies didn't know that they got captured or didn't know that they spilled the beans. And because they, they did that, now these people become ally points because they know that, and it's not even that they came ally, they are now footstools for you or your team to use them for information in order to bust the entire ring from the inside out okay i had a dream that i was in a film and in the movie i was uh the enemy stole something and i ended up with his coat and i'm like where did, how did i end up with his coat but inside of it was all the stolen merchandise and, and i had to go back in in order to uh, bug him to create a, a audio bug to get his confession. And at the end, uh, my partner came in, which was, uh, it ended up being Eddie Murphy's character from Brooklyn something, I forgot what it was, where he played a cop and it's the only movie he plays a cop and he wears his hair in like little twisted short locks. Um, I forgot what that was. But he was my partner. And um, we ended up on the front line. And it's like we were joking with each other and all this kind of stuff. But we standing on the front line with all the police cars. And everybody's got our back. It's like, what you going to do? This is what it is. God's kind of got y'all in a situation where you've infiltrated, you got the information, you bugged the enemy, the enemy, you taking the enemy out. You're taking the enemy out from the inside. And at the end, there's only not, the only choice that the enemy has is to give themselves up or die. Meaning, you know, die by fire, a firing squad, because we were all standing out in front of in the middle of a street in Manhattan and literally there were police cars blocking up the enemy's path to come uh, come forward and we're standing in the middle like what you gonna do if Baal be God choose him if God be God oh well it looks like it's your demise day <laughs> um, so that being said So you pretty much played out the chess board and you're going to win, win the game. You, you're, you have positioned yourself in order to win. Okay? And I'm going to add this part here. I was going to add it as a short. I might still do that. But I'm going to say this. 
in the organized crime episode I mentioned where the father had um, his son had been kidnapped. He had to think with a level head in order to help the police because he was the only asset they had in order to go in and get information on the cartel, the auction, and all of that. But at first, he was operating under a spirit of sabotage where he was just focused on his main goal, getting his son out. But the cop had to pull him to the side after he almost ruined a bust and said, look, we want to use you. We want your help, but we can't keep using you if you're going to blow up our cover. And he started to explain to him, I need you to focus like, he's like, you ever dealt with a teenager? I know you said you worked as this. He's like, yeah, I worked as a, as a teacher. He said, I need you to use the same focus that you use to keep patient with them to help us. God, going back to what I said that my coach said the other day, God has had you wait. You've been in a season where God has had you in a waiting season. And you're like, why do I have to wait this long? Why am I sitting in this waiting season? What is? Why am I waiting? What am I waiting for? What is this? You're waiting because any wrong move could literally jeopardize the case in this particular episode he had to move with a cool head and that's how they got the invitation to the auction they took that information and saw the invitation and when they sent they sent him back into the auction and he had the ability to give them the information not only necessary but with a cool mind, he told them where the security guards were so that they could take the enemy out. God has strategically placed security around you, spiritual security, which is your angels that you call upon. It says in Psalms 103 and 20 that angels hearken unto the word of God and go forth to perform it. The angels will do the bidding of the word of God. If you pray, these angels will go forth and fight the battle for you. These people that were the cops, they were operating as the angels. They were operating as the strategically placed people in order to back this man, in order to help him get his son back. But the enemy didn't know that until they saw a photograph of him with one of the cops and he was like oh no we gotta get out of here and right when just like in the movie the movie dream i had right when they were coming out there was a line of cops waiting for him and the cops because the guy operated with a cool head in the situation he was able to go in get information, tell them each and every person that was in strategic position so that they knew to go take that person out, meaning thereby what? Taking them off the board so that when they came in to infiltrate the organized auction, they were not only able to get the child back, but they were able to catch the... Um, catch the person the perp that they were trying to catch all in one move but they couldn't do that be before because they had to wait it was a waiting game and when you when i saw the son run out the front door to his father's arms one your god and his spouse has ran into the arms of the father so he's running to god's arms two in the father operating with a level head in God operating in a level field of operation you have um, he strategically isolated moved and pushed the pieces around the board in such a way that when you waited when you prayed as he did said when you were obedient to follow his instructions the manifestation could take 
place, but it could not take place before that because everything had to be in place. And he wanted to use the opportunity to catch your enemies red-handed. Apostle Youngblood did a word the other day, um, a couple weeks back, where he talked about the fact that God allowed your enemies to chase you just like he did Moses and the children of Israel in order to draw them out for capture. He needed to make sure, just like when the guy came in and to take the photo that he had seen of the father with the cop, it was all a drawn out move that if he hadn't gone back, if he had just not gone back for that photo, he wouldn't have been there. He would not have, they even asked the people that were there, was like, what's he doing here? It was like, oh, we gonna get him. We gonna get him now. He's in here with them. He can't even lie. He was at the auction. He can't lie now. Your God will set you up that he wants all the players in place that they can't even get out. They can't even say when they get on the court saying, well, I, uh, I didn't do nothing. I wasn't attached to that. It's like he was there. And they caught him and arrested him. Right? They pulled him out. The police, they pulled him out of his car. when he, Literally, when he was driving away, your enemies think they're they going to drive away. But you already had this sucker set up. You got a firing squad ready. You watching your enemies. The scripture says, and this is going to be my final note on this. The scripture declares <laughs> that the enemy got caught stealing, had to pay back sevenfold everything he stole from his own house. You're going to get double for all your trouble. Isaiah 61, 7, 8. Richly rewarded for all you had to go through and double for your trouble. And then um, Joel 2 and 27 that states you will get double for your trouble of everything that the enemy stole from you and your family. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Play the board. Play it right. Wait when you need to wait. Take instruction. Be obedient. And you're going to come out of this on top. You're going to go home. And you're going to go to your promised land cross over into it as long as you keep a level head don't be so focused on the elevation just like i said uh that the um main character stated in svu when she was talking to her cop subordinate she said don't become so focused on the uh promotion elevation that you forget that you still got to have compassion for the people that you're trying to help. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. So I hope this blessed you. Um, until next time, bye-bye.